It is Wednesday, September 12th, and as we take a look into the tropics, we can see that there is some remnant convective activity along a stalled out frontal boundary that is fading away across the Gulf of Mexico and Western Atlantic, but nothing is organized and no development is expected at this time. The deep tropics, including the Atlantic to the west of the African coastline, along with the Caribbean Sea, are also very quiet. Therefore, all eyes are on newly formed Tropical Storm Nadine, which was classified within the last 24 hours, and Nadine does appear to be becoming stronger as we have convection developing near the surface circulation, and the outflow pattern looks very healthy in nearly all quadrants. However, we continue to not be very concerned about Nadine as there is a long wave trough out across the western Atlantic, and this is going to guarantee that Nadine will not pose any threat whatsoever to interest in the Caribbean, Bahamas, Bermuda, or the U.S. East Coast. Nadine currently has maximum sustained winds of 60 miles per hour, but it's likely to strengthen into a Category 1 hurricane by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. And the Hurricane Center forecast does take the storm more toward the north and then northeast in the 4-5 to five day period. And any impacts along the Azores Islands would be well beyond day 5. However, all interests there are advised to keep tabs on Nadine because even if the storm does become extra tropical by then, if the Remnant Low Pressure Center does decide to track directly over the islands, it could still provide interest there with a lot of heavy rainfall and stronger winds. In the meantime, the Hurricane Center 5-day forecast track does have very good agreement with the Tropical Model Suite along with the GFS ensembles. More on the dynamical models in just a moment, but we also have newly classified Tropical Storm Christie located in the eastern Pacific. Maximum sustained winds are 45 miles per hour. It's moving toward the northwest at 12 miles per hour, and the official forecast is keeping the storm just to the west of the Baja Peninsula along with Cabo San Lucas, followed up by dissipation over cooler waters in the extended range. Two to three members of the Tropical Model Suite are still implying a track directly towards Cabo San Lucas, but the overwhelming consensus is in agreement with the official Hurricane Center forecast track with a movement more toward the west, and this is the most likely solution at this time. If Christie is going to make any attempt at tracking directly over the peninsula, it would likely do so as a remnant low in the extended period after it has already weakened over cooler water temperatures and then potentially gets drawn toward the northeast by an approaching trough. The 12Z run of the GFS ensembles are also showing a track to the west of the Baja Peninsula, with only a few of the solutions implying a track more toward the northeast once the storm has already weakened below tropical storm status. Christie is likely going to have a peak intensity of a strong tropical storm, with an outside chance of becoming a borderline Category 1 hurricane within the next two to three days before moving into those cooler water temperatures. The latest visible satellite imagery shows a rapidly improving signature of a tropical storm situated to the south of Mexico, and Christy almost appears to be developing an eye on this animation. However, the enhanced infrared shows that we still do not have a well-defined eye wall, so the current maximum intensity initialization of only 45 miles per hour appears to be accurate at this time, and conditions appear to be favorable for steady intensification over the next 48 hours until Christie starts to move into this dry patch to the west of the Baja Peninsula, along with those cooler water temperatures that quickly dip below 26 degrees Celsius, which is an unfavorable benchmark for tropical cyclone development. The 12Z run of the CMC model shows Nadine strengthening throughout the forecast period and then recurving in the general direction of the Azores Islands. So that is something that interests there. We'll have to monitor beyond day 5 and it also has the remnants of Christie moving into the Baja Peninsula by day 6. The 12Z run of the GFS has a similar forecast for both Nadine and Christie, but the remainder of the tropics are forecast to remain quiet for the next 7 days. The 12Z run of the ECMWF model is keeping anomalous troughing out across the central and eastern United States for the next week, and this is going to promote below average temperatures in this region, along with a below average risk from tropical cyclones. But in terms of the Azores Islands, much like what we saw with the GFS and the CMC, the European is placing the center of circulation directly over the islands at day 7. So that is all for this Wednesday. We will continue to closely follow Nadine, Christie, and the rest of the tropics throughout the remainder of the season.